يسعدنا أن نستقبل اليوم أنا وزملائي في جريدة البلاد سعادة السفير إيتان نائية سفير دولة إسرائيل لدى مملكة البحرين والذي تقلد مسؤوليته مؤخرا بعد تأسيس العلاقات الدبلوماسية بين البلدين ومن خلال هذا الحوار سوف نتطرق إلى ما وصلت إليه العلاقات بين البلدين وما تم تحقيقه وإنجازت وإنجازه وما نتطلع أو تتطلع الدولتين إلى تحقيقه في المستقبل لتعزيز وتثبيت هذه العلاقات بهدف أن تكون أن يكون لها مساهمة في تحقيق الأمن والاستقرار والسلام والتنمية الاقتصادية في المنطقة بما يؤدي إلى حل في النهاية إلى حل القضية الفلسطينية في إطار المبادرة العربية وحل الدولتين بهذا نبدأ ذلك ويسعدنا أن نرحب بك سعادة السفير أهلا وسهلا Satisfaction to the development of the relationship between Bahrain and Israel um, How much you are satisfied with it? How do you see the the trend of it going and how much we can do to ensure that there is much more people to people interaction and connection. So far, it's more mainly through the official uh, channels and which is a good way to start with to prepare the ground. But we want to see more of a people to people contact. How do you see that? Uh, thank you. Um, first of all, you know, I just started here as, as ambassador, so of course I'm not satisfied because we just started. <laughs> there is much to do. And there is a, uh, I think there is a potential um, that we are now, that I am now exploring uh, together with the uh, Bahraini uh, government uh, ministers during my uh, meeting with, uh, with the king, with, uh, with the crown prince and prime minister. Uh, I met this morning uh, Sheikh Nasser. Uh, the uh, Minister of uh, uh, Trade and uh, businessmen, we are talking and talking about the potential and how to expand economic relationships. I think we can uh, expand the trade. We already started, and I said it already, uh, to import aluminium. Bahrain, more Israeli companies are now interested in importing aluminium from Bahrain which is good. Um, we, we are interested in uh, exploring imports of uh, construction materials from, uh, from Bahrain, even uh, fisheries. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, there is an interest from Bahrain to, uh, to, to import from Israel uh, fresh fruits and veg and uh, vegetables. Uh, I think that uh, trade and uh, cargo uh, can also be a very interesting um, uh, area to follow, uh, Bahrain, uh, Manama has uh, some, some advantages we, uh, we can use. Um, we uh, just signed an agreement when my foreign minister was here, we, we signed an agreement, uh, ship to air, a very quick turnover of, uh, of uh, shipments uh, to air. Um, Gulf Air is flying to Israel, soon to be joined by uh, two Israeli airlines, Al Al and uh, Israel. So, um, that is also being explored and, and more. I think that uh, when it comes to uh, investments, uh, there is a lot of opportunity here. Uh, Bahrain is located, uh, the location of Bahrain, the, the unique conditions here, and of course, looking at, uh, at, the, at the region. Uh, Bahrain, historically, uh, was a gate uh, moving from the east moving goods from the east, from the Indus, to Mesopotamia, to the Levant, to the shores of the Mediterranean. And all we have to do is to renew these old uh, traditions. Yeah. And uh, of course, um, I think that the more we talk and the more we explore, we will find more, more, more things that we can do uh, together. Of art, course, people to people. Absolutely. Sport, Sport you know. uh, art and culture, uh, food. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I 
think that what I would like to see is uh, Bahrain is visiting Israel, uh, seeing Israel in their own eyes, not through the lenses of, of uh, you know, TV or, or what they read in newspapers sometimes. Do, do Bahrainis need a visa to go to Israel? Yes, yeah, Bahrainis need a visa, Israelis need a visa here. On the, you get it at the airport when you reach there, or no, you need it to get it before? No, you need, uh, you need to get a visa. Uh, I want to see sport delegations. Yeah. I want to see youth delegations. Yeah. I want to see tourists. Mm -hmm. I think the tourists increase the level of understanding. People get, to, get used to the food, get yeah. used to, to what there is to see, the culture. There is so much to do. We just started. We are building uh, close warm and friendly relationships. There are areas of strength between the two. Now, if we look at the very important se sector is the water management. Israel is very uh, strong in that area. We all know that. And in this region, the main concern is about water. Did, have, is there any talk about it or is there any way to... to, to of course. Yeah? Um, Israel has very uh, advanced technologies when it comes to uh, desalination, reverse osmosis. Israel is one of the most advanced countries uh, when it comes to desalination. Israel desalinates um, almost 80% of its water. We also recycle. and We are first in the world in, uh, in water recycling. Second after us is uh, Spain by, by a very big margin. I think only 20% of the water or so 90% of the water is, is uh, recycled. So water management is, of course, one of the areas. Clean tech uh, is, is certainly an area where Israel is, is very strong and is more than happy to share its experience. We already started uh, cooperating in that, uh, in that region. There are other sectors, of course, medicine. When, it, when we talk about water, it's a very uh, unique Israeli technology, unique and advanced, uh, turning uh, water from air. Yeah. Uh, where, where, Amazing. I mean, it, it, it's still being developed because the uh, source of energy for that can be the sun. So it's completely st a complete standalone machine that you put in the middle of the desert with uh, soon solar panels and you turn on the tap. You get water. And, and, and you have water from, <laughs> from air. Right. Which I say it as nothing less than magic, especially in our climate. Absolutely. You can just turn it on and have water without the need for piping or anything else, uh, soon to be put on trains, lorries that go through the desert, uh, people who travel in the cars or, or anything. So that needs further development, but it's there. Yeah, I, th I think these are the, the, the measures that really will make people believe and be committed to peace and the establishment of cooperation and relations. Now, you know we have uh, there's nothing to lose. Nothing know, to uh, lose there. However, we have a number of people who has built in their mind and mentalities the stories and the situations of the past, particularly our generation. The people who manage to, 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 to grasp the realities of things, the people who are not yet. They want to be to see, they want to be convinced. And uh, we, the way to convince them, and we hope that this closer relationship cooperation will contribute to establishment of the overall peace, especially when it comes to solving the issue of the Palestinian issue. Uh, do you see any, any, any way in the going ahead with the establishment of the two states and, that, and on the basis of the Arab uh, proposal or initiative? We all have to remember, uh, young or older, peace is the one thing where there are no losers. Yeah. It's a win-win-win uh, game. And, and, and therefore, when you embark upon a, upon a PCT initiative or, or building relationships, we never had war between us, but when you build new relationships, it's in order to create exactly that, a win-win situation. There's nothing to lose. That's one important thing. Then, when you, when you also remember that we cannot change the past. We have a sad story to tell. The other side has a sad story to tell, and if we keep on telling each other the sad stories, I'm not saying forget your past, on the contrary. But I'm saying I cannot change the past. I cannot solve problems of the past. I can solve problems in the future, and I can change only the future. So let's sit down together and talk about the future. 
stop trying to persuade each other about whose narrative is right or wrong. That leads us nowhere. I can tell my stories to, to, to our kids, they have to know where they came from. Others can tell their stories, but when, then we sit together and we look at the future together and how we build the future together in the region. How we, uh, how we create water when there isn't, how we, uh, how we make uh, better uh, uh, medical care for our people, how we improve the uh, economic situation of our people, how we invest together and how we uh, trade together or, or, or sit down and eat together and enjoy each other's uh, customs and learn about each other. And this is very important, the, 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 these two things. We cannot change the past, we can only change the future. And by doing so, it's a win-win. We're creating a win-win uh, situation. Now, we tried to negotiate directly with the Palestinians. For many reasons, we didn't, uh, we didn't have a real breakthrough. We thought we had one in, uh, in, the, in the 90s, uh, missed opportunity uh, to the opinions of, of, uh, uh, of many, and we are where we are today. So we can keep on trying to do the same thing over and over again, or we can try new ways. And this is where the Abraham Accords are offering a different approach and a road that was not yet taken. Let's start creating an atmosphere of more understanding uh, in the region, yeah. where people suddenly realize that we can sit down together. And when I say people, I'm not just saying about Arabs or Palestinians, I'm also talking about Israelis. When you open the borders, when you can sit in, in, in Manama and enjoy a good meal with, with friends, when you can sit in Tel Aviv and, and do the same thing, and you can sit in Dubai or Abu Dhabi or, or Rabat, suddenly the future doesn't seem so, so, so vague. You, you, you actually realize that it is possible, that we can talk, we can understand each other, build trust, and, and that helps to, to bridge uh, problems which maybe at our times now, today, seem unsolvable. Yeah. And I'll tell you a story. I was ambassador to Baku, and I love history. Mm -hmm. And so I, when I was in Baku, I, I, uh, I studied, I learned, I, I, I traveled around the city of Baku to, to, uh, to hear the stories of the First World War, how everybody competed for the uh, Azeri oil, Baku oil, the Germans, the Turks, the Russians, the Italians, the English, everybody were fighting each other to get first to the Azeri oil. And fighting each other, killing each other. 90 years later, they all set up one big company and they produce the oil together and sell it to the West. Yeah. <laughs> we, don't, we, we can learn from this, from, we can learn a lesson from that. Yeah. Things that today, yesterday we fought about, maybe in 90 years it will all look, or why 90? Maybe, maybe next year, or maybe a few years, in a few years, we, 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 look, uh, we look to us ridiculous. And our children will ask us, yeah. what were you doing, uh, you know, uh, spending, uh, wasting your time and, and creating so much uh, uh, pain? So let's create this atmosphere, this trust. Start from the outside. When I was in the UAE and, and here, and I talked to Palestinian businessmen, they see eye to eye with me. On, on these topics. They say, yes, we can, we can put, for the moment, politics aside, let's talk about what we can do together, not what we can't do together. And that's a good start. So, can the countries of the GCC or Bahrain in particular contribute to that effort? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. of course. So establishing of, of this relationship will eventually lead to helping, to achieving a peace in the region, taking into consideration the rights of both the people, the Palestinians and the Israelis. Opening the doors, yeah. uh, showing, leading by example. Yeah. What I would like to, uh, to see as, as ambassador of Israel here, uh, and I'm not alone in that, in that vision, uh, I heard it also when I was uh, head of mission in, uh, in Abu Dhabi, and I see it here. I, I think what we want to do is to, is to create a model and to show the whole region what it means close, friendly, warm relationships. Lead by example, showing others that it's possible and, and building a model where I want others all over the region to ask themselves, why not us? We also want 
to share the knowledge. We also want to share the opportunities. We want to share um, the fruits of, of this process. And you know, sitting in Abu Dhabi or, or sitting here in Manama, I get a lot of messages on, on social media from young people in Pakistan, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, uh, Saudi, Palestinian, Palestinians and others who say, uh, Moroccans, others, we want closer relationships. And the discourse, this decision, brave decision, that was taken by the leadership here in the, in the Kingdom of Bahrain and the, the United Arab Emirates already changed the discourse in the region. People are talking about peace. Yeah. I'm not saying that everybody are now uh, giving hands to each other and dance, and, and dance together yet, but you can hear people are having different conversations. Yes. We have changed the discourse and hopefully it will lead us to uh, closer relationships in the future and uh, to a peaceful coexistence. Yeah, I, th I think it's uh, the new generation. I think they, they will now grow with uh, that conviction of the, of the importance of peace. And we can see it, we can feel it. I can tell you from our side as well. So we should try to support all these uh, initiatives and all these movements. So the question of uh, the two states, are, uh, what do you think about it? Yeah. You know, I'm not a politician. So I leave, uh, I leave it to the politicians uh, to, to discuss how, uh, how it will look like. I think that the, uh, the vision is, is, is clear. How together is what we are not yet agreed upon. How will it look like? Uh, what we need to do is to build trust, build relationships, sit down, look at what we can achieve, look at this peace process realistically. Uh, nobody can get everything that they want. And, and when we realize that, and uh, we, we can sit down together and come to a solution. I don't want to predetermine the solution, exactly what it will be or how it will be. Um, I think that um, Israel said it, Israeli leader said it all the time, recognition of, uh, of Israel as the homeland for the Jewish people, meaning that it's, uh, it's, a, it's a safe haven for Jews, not just for the Jews, but for Jews, uh, cessation of uh, terror, of any violent acts, uh, and we can continue from there. Okay. Do you see any possible, uh, uh, again, uh, to start the negotiation with the Palestinians now at this stage? You know, it takes two to tango. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you have to ask the bride. <laughs> yeah, well, we are ready. <laughs> again. When you want to achieve something, um, it doesn't matter whether it's a, a, a political negotiation or it's a business deal. The, the expectations, the demands should be realistic. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I think that once um, that happens, and, and we can have not just uh, peace. Peace is for what? Peace is a mean to an end. The end is security, which will achieve then uh, economic prosperity. Stability. Stability, so. economic, but, but all for economic prosperity for, to enable us to live and to prosper. We all have to be realistic in what we ask for and uh, to manage our expectations. And when that happens, I'm sure we can find a common ground and uh, live in peace. Yeah. Well, and if we come back to Bahrain, we have a unique position in this region, in the sense that we have a very old association. We have the, one of the largest Jewish community in the region who lived between us. And I remember those days, students with us in the school, we go to their houses. Our, our neighborhood has at least two, three of the Jewish houses. At that time, even the number were less than what it used to be before. Still, they were there, and 
we do have a, a, a synagogue available, probably the only country in the region that we have that uh, uh, existing. We have a, a cemetery there, and I know how important the cemetery to the Jewish culture and Jewish conscience, you know, when you have that. We have that position. How do you evaluate it? How do you see it? First of all, of course, you are right. Um, uh, you have an indigenous uh, Jewish community here of many years. And um, coming here, and even before coming here, I was uh, very happy uh, uh, to meet and, and, and befriend the members of the Jewish community of, uh, of Bahrain. I also met uh, Israelis of uh, Bahraini descent, a few hundreds of them who, who live in Israel. They visited Bahrain, a very emotional uh, visit. First time since they left Bahrain in the late 40s. Um, and um, I tell you one more thing. We have uh, Israelis of Bahraini descent uh, who want to come here and become a bridge between the two people. Uh, the uh, vice president for research of the Hebrew University in Jerusalem is of uh, Bahraini descent. His father was born in Bahrain. The CEO of one of our biggest companies in Israel is of Bahraini descent and is, as we speak... Which company is that? Tadiran. And uh, as we speak, his people are here uh, looking for investment opportunities. Uh, they want to invest and open a, um, a company here, uh, open a factory here, sorry. So, so, so you see these, these connections uh, from the past. Yeah. It's helping. And coming back together yeah. and it, uh, helping us exactly as you said, yeah. uh, really building a bridge. We heard that there is a um, the, uh, call for renovating, renovating the cemetery here. Uh, I think Rabbi uh, Eli, Abadi. Eli Abadi in Abu Dhabi is calling for that. Is that, is that a project that is coming we can see? Well, a few, few weeks ago, uh, there was a visit here uh, of the uh, descendants of Rabbi Shimon Cohen who was the first and only rabbi so far of the Jewish community here in Bahrain. And his, uh, his family arrived here. It was a very exciting uh, trip. His last remaining son uh, also came on a wheelchair, uh, around 90 year old, and he said, bring me here even if this is the last thing I see. I'm ready to die in Bahrain, but I want to see Bahrain again. He took, all his, he took his uh, family to uh, Babel Bahrain uh, to see where he uh, grew up. Uh, they, they also went to the, uh, to the cemetery and then decided there and then that they want to renovate uh, the cemetery. So I read in the papers here today um, that uh, they are, uh, they have set up a fund, they're raising money uh, with which they will come, uh, they will come and um, renovate the, uh, the cemetery. This is the, uh, the graveyard of their... Uh, yes. Ancestors and the ancestors, the, 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 the fathers, the parents, yeah. the, the, the yeah. uncles. But that visit was very emotional. Yeah, and also sure for me, I, uh, I'm coming from a small city in Israel, a relatively small city, and I was surprised to know that in my city there are uh, some people of Bahraini descent. Well, we are really working hard to establish a close economic ties, because I think that this is a, a strong bridge. Uh, I want the relationships that we are building to be based on very strong, uh, to stand on very strong legs, like every good solid uh, table. And economic relationships, and as you mentioned before, uh, people-to-people -people relationships, uh, which include everything from youth exchanges to sport, to culture, uh, to food, is, is, is really the, 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 the what will make the table stable, yeah. what make people uh, uh, hold on to each other. When we create interests, uh, we create understanding, uh, knowledge and familiarity. But we have soon uh, visits of Israeli ministers who will come to, uh, to Bahrain in, uh, very soon to uh, really uh, uh, enhance cooperation in various fields. So. I think that the biggest headline is we are looking together into a much brighter future when it comes to the relationship between our two countries. Uh, do you, are you thinking of anything like platforms to build on, like for example, joint chamber of commerce between the two countries? Is that a possibility? Of course, of course, you are. Uh, 
you're hitting the nail on its head. There are, there are people at work uh, to doing that. And you know what? Again, this is all in order to create more stability, more security, not just for Israelis and Bahrainis, in the whole region. Because people will look at what we do and they, and they will ask themselves, why not us? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Are we going to see soon uh, the Bahrain Israeli society or like one of the platform of people to people? I, I hope so. I would very much uh, welcome it. This initiative should not come from government. This has to come, come from the people. Uh, bottom up. Come from the people. But if, if, if it comes, if it happens, I'll be the first ones to salute them and uh, hopefully they'll invite me to the opening. How, how is the movement, the travel now? Is it in the Not a lot because of COVID. COVID really holds us yeah. back. Uh, I think 4,000 Israelis already visited uh, Bahrain uh, so far. Uh, less Bahrainis, of course, went, uh, went to Israel. Not a lot, uh, really uh, a few. But also uh, Israeli borders were closed uh, because of Corona. We are now opened it. Uh, Gulf Air is, is flying soon to be joined by uh, the Israeli airlines, El Al and uh, Israel. So I'm sure that by the spring and, 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 and certainly in the summer, we will see uh, greater, sort of uh, greater traffic, traffic of tourists. Is, yeah. I think that Israelis will find in Bahrain uh, a very uh, close, warm winter destination for holidays. I think that Bahrainis will find in Israel a, a close and somewhat warm but not as hot <laughs> in the summer <laughs> in the summer I, I can see already people organizing conferences to be held in Bahrain and I think that tourists from other countries who would want to come and experience firsthand uh, these unique relationships where you come to Israel you come to the Emirates you come to Bahrain in, in either order I think we'll see that as well well, uh, I'm only five weeks here. Shwoy, <laughs> shwoy. It is also, uh, it is going to happen, believe me. Uh, there are already requests from the Israeli parliament uh, to look for contacts here. I'm in touch with, um, uh, with Nancy Kaduri, a very good friend, a very helpful friend. Uh, and uh, I hope that soon I'll meet others. I, I'm planning uh, meetings with, uh, with the speaker of parliament, with the head of the Shura. <laughs> Give me some time. <laughs> okay, the last thing, when is Al Al going to fly to Bahrain? Soon. I think it's a matter of uh, a few months, few weeks, a uh, few months. But we'll see El Al, hopefully, and Israel uh, flying uh, to, to Manama. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, You're most welcome. Thank you very much. Mashkuri.